Hey guys, this is Down Phoenix, and today we're going to be talking about E3, which everybody knows, of course, is the biggest press event of the year for the games industry. Everybody gets involved. The biggest companies, of course, like Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, will get involved. We even have indie companies like Devolver Digital get involved, and so much more that happens. All of these companies show off the games and products that they're going to excite us consumers with in the next coming months and years even. Now that E3 is over though, I want to talk about my thoughts on what happened at this year's E3 and offer some advice to companies going into next year. Now I know the chances that they'll find this video are slim to none, but hey, if you happen to like this video, don't forget to share it with your friends and maybe they will eventually find it. So let's get into it. Now we're going to start, of course, with EA, since they were the very first one to have a press conference, and boy, was it a snooze fest. If it wasn't for Andrea Renee, this would have been a complete disaster, because the show as a whole was just very poorly done, and she was really the only saving grace that the show had. That and, of course, the Anthem gameplay that we got to see at the very end. But even that was like, eh, you know, it, it looked good. But it's not like something to be super excited about at this time. So we're going to talk about some things that EA should do. First of all, they need to completely change the way they present things. It goes way too slow. It's too drawn out. And it just loses people's attention. They need to speed it up. They don't need an hour and a half plus press conference. EA can easily show off everything that they've got in about 40 minutes or less. No problem. So let's start getting to a shorter, more tightly focused conference. And then if you want to show deep dives of gameplay and things like that afterwards, you can have separate little things for that. And another thing, why do we constantly have Madden and FIFA forced down our throats every press conference? I understand that both of these game series are very important for EA. They're some of the biggest money makers in the company. But these are not the kinds of games that really should be touched on a whole lot in the conferences. A lot of them have a dedicated fan base, and many of them aren't core gamers. They don't really follow events like E3, so it's kind of a waste of time to focus on those games at E3. Instead, they should consider targeting that audience more directly, the actual fans of that series, and have their own separate events, kind of showing off what's going to be new in the latest year edition of Madden or FIFA. That's the way I think they should do it. Now, if they want to touch on it briefly, that's fine. You know, it shouldn't be more than a couple of minutes each on the every game. If they want a deep dive, again, they should do that as a separate event. And I think I speak for everybody here on the next two things. Never, ever again do an esports commentary on stage, especially for a crappy Basic as hell mobile game that nobody even wanted. Seriously, that Command & Conquer Rivals reveal was one of the worst things I've ever seen out of an E3 press conference. I would have rather had the Wii Music thing all over again. And you remember how terrible that was? I mean, that was completely awful. I'd rather have the Kinect reveal again than that. That was just completely awful and so disrespectful one of the most disrespectful things I've ever seen done to a gaming franchise in my entire life. Please, EA, for the love of God, do two things. One, kill this game and don't release it. And two, never put us through anything like that again. So now that we've scolded EA, I've got some great advice going into the next year. First of all, let's bring back some classic franchise love. I mean, we all love games like Road Rash and Mutant League Football and Jungle Strike and so many other classic games that haven't been touched in literally decades. How about we announce one or two of these games making a comeback, a long-awaited comeback? That would do a lot to help bring back the fan base that you guys had. And of course, make sure that comeback isn't a really poorly done free-to-play mobile game like the game we were just talking about. Another thing is I really like how EA has their own developers come on the stage and talk about their products. That's a really nice touch, and I think it harkens back to EA's classic origins where they were all about their developers, and it would be great to see that continue. 
And of course, one last thing is you guys do need to keep driving home that you understand the mistakes that you've made in the past, but you need to also make sure that you commit to making sure those mistakes don't happen again. Getting rid of things like loot boxes is great, and I'm glad that you guys brought that message up multiple times, but gamers don't really believe you. You guys have had several, several years of doing this, so let's bring it up to snuff and let's start competing, EA. I really believe in you guys, but you have to give us more. Now let's move on to Xbox. Xbox had arguably one of the best conferences of E3. It was very well paced. It was a little bit on the long side, but they kept things up and at them. They did not let the show lose momentum even once. So good job on the presentation, Microsoft. You guys have improved that immensely versus past E3s. So my advice for next year is to keep the presentation game up. Definitely keep a strong focus on that because you guys do it very well and don't mix it up. Don't try to do anything that's kind of crazy like another company that we're going to be talking about soon. Just keep that stuff up. Now, that being said, you guys need to give us some more exclusives and more love for the Xbox system. It's not hard to see why some gamers are not confident in the Xbox brand. It's because you guys have a very mixed message with wanting to bring your games over to PC and mobile and all this stuff. And I can certainly understand the reason why you guys are wanting to do that. After all, it's all about making money, right? But that being said, it doesn't lend a lot of faith in the Xbox fan base. They have to white knight and they have to kind of justify the reason that you guys do the things you do. As opposed to simply being excited for what you're doing. So definitely give us some more exclusive titles. And one last thing, Microsoft. I mean, I think everybody in the world is not surprised that you're working on a new Xbox system. I mean, who is really shocked? People work on hardware all the time. The thing is, though, this is not something that you should bring up on the E3 right after you release new hardware. That is simply a terrible idea. So maybe next time, if you don't actually have a new Xbox system that will be released before the next E3, maybe don't mention it. And now that brings us to Bethesda. Bethesda is sort of new to the E3 game, but this is their fourth year of doing an E3 press conference. Bethesda has really grown into bigger shoes ever since the company has started on very humble beginnings with the Elder Scrolls series. They now release several games a year, some of them in huge franchises. So it's not a big surprise that Bethesda has E3 press conferences. But that being said, Bethesda, what happened? Now let's bring up the elephant in the room, which of course is Andrew WK. Now I personally have no problem with Andrew WK's music or Andrew WK or anything like that. But whenever you bring up a game and say that you're going to reveal gameplay footage of said game... And yes, everybody knew that Andrew WK was on stage. I think everybody was expecting that they were going to see the gameplay while the band was playing. Not have to sit the entire four and a half minutes watching the band play before they got to say anything. That was a really dumb idea, Bethesda. Never, ever do that again. Shame on you. Shame on you. Another thing when I say this, as many gamers, including myself, are excited to hear that Elder Scrolls 6 is coming out, but we all know it's not going to be for a long ass time. As a matter of fact, it's probably not even going to be on the PS4 or Xbox One. It'll probably be on the next generation systems because at this point, we're getting to the end stages of the current console generation. We're going to see the new hardware within the next two years. And Elder Scrolls 6 is going to be on that hardware, not on the ones we got right now. So don't tease us with things that far ahead. Because in your past E3 presentations, you have done a very good job of only showing us games that we were going to see this year. And that was one thing I really liked about your presentations, Bethesda. But you guys really left it out as much as you could. And there's really not a whole lot of games we're going to see this year. Matter of fact, we're going to see less games from you guys this year than we did in previous E3s. Even though you had a much longer presentation 
than you did in previous E3s. So that goes without saying, you need to speed it up. Speed it up. We have short attention. You need to stop doing this, Bethesda. You do not need a conference that's literally as long as Microsoft and Ubisoft's. Your conference is longer than Sony's. What the hell? And of course, again, like with EA, we need to cut down on the talk about mobile phone games. We all have to accept that mobile phone games are a big part of gaming now. And honestly, that Elder Scrolls Blades game, that actually looks really fun. That's one I really look forward to checking out. But that being said, you guys spent way too long on that game. You should have spent like maybe two minutes tops on that. Having a little discussion about what you can do with it. Showing a gameplay clip or trailer or something like that. And then moving things on from there. We are not there to watch mobile phone games. We're the core gaming audience. A lot of us don't even care about phone games. Now that brings us, of course, to Devolver Digital, who had their second E3 press conference ever. And Devolver, don't change a thing. That shit was beautiful. <laughs> Well, besides, maybe show us different games next year. Fair enough. And now we've got Square Enix, which, of course, has had their first big E3 press conference in years, from what I understand. I think they used to have them in the past, but they haven't done it for a long time. So, first of all, Square Enix, welcome back to the game. Welcome back to the E3 press conference game. That being said, I had a lot of problems with your short-ass conference. But those problems can be summed up with two statements. One, have a presentation. You guys are there to present your stuff. There was no presentation. Other than at the very beginning, a very short little speech, and then the rest of it was literally just gameplay trailers. That is not an E3 press conference. You guys could have easily just put that up on YouTube and call it a day. But no, you guys had to make a huge live press conference to do that. Come on. Come on. And if anything, unlike most of the other companies I'm talking about, your conference was too short. You guys showed off a lot of different games, and you didn't really talk much about them. We really don't know a lot about certain games that you showed off. We want to know more. So you need to expand and divulge more information to us. Or don't even bother having a conference. Okay, and now we move on to Ubisoft, who is kind of a mixed bag on the E3 presentation stuff. And we're going to go right into it, because one of the things that I think stands out in a lot of people's minds was the very beginning of the press conference. Now, personally, I am not a fan of Just Dance or dancing stuff or whatever, but you got to admit, that was actually pretty cool what they pulled off. It was really well choreographed really well presented so bravo to that ubisoft that said ubisoft the rest of your show for the most part was pretty low key and low energy but overall if you're going to start the show with such high energy and just bombastic attitude you need to keep it up you don't need to just tone it way down after you get to that point so keep the mood up and again, of course, another complaint. You guys need to tone down the length. You guys could have easily cut a good half hour or so. There's no reason that your show needed to be as long as Microsoft's when so many more games were shown off at Microsoft's press conference. And Microsoft's, unlike yours, had a good energy throughout the whole show. So again, tone it down or speed it up. However, that being said, one really good strength about Ubisoft's show was the presenters themselves. They clearly knew what they were talking about, and they did a really good job with presenting the content. One thing that definitely can be trimmed out of the show is we don't need to talk about games that are just about to come out. That whole presentation on The Crew 2 was completely unnecessary, considering that we're literally going to see that game in a couple of weeks. That was just not needed to be brought up at all. Same with the whole For Honor going free to play and adding new content and things like that. For Honor has been around for two years. I think it's fair to say that we shouldn't be talking about that game anymore at an E3 press conference unless you're announcing a sequel or something of that nature. And one last thing, of course, is we need to have a better ending to the show. I mean, Yves Guimon coming out on stage and 
having his nice little pep talk was great and all, but it was a terrible way to end the show. You guys should have took a note from Steve Jobs' playbook and did a one more thing kind of moment. After all, there's been a lot of rumors for a new Splinter Cell game. That would have been the perfect time to tease it. Hint, hint. And now we get on to Sony. Sony has done a great job in the past with their presentations. This year, though, they decided to really think outside of the box and experiment. And unfortunately, it didn't really play out unless you were actually at the conference. It probably was really cool and amazing if you were at the conference. But if you're somebody like myself that watched this at home, you were just confused and bewildered over what they did. They decided to have an event where the people at the show had to actually move from one venue to another. And in between, they had this really cringe little presentation thing that kind of like covered things in between. And it was just awkward. Don't do that kind of thing again, Sony, unless you actually have something really entertaining planned for us at home while we're waiting for the main event to really happen. Another thing that was lacking on Sony's show is there was just a lack of games being showed off. I mean, their show was very intimate with the games that they did show. They did spend a lot of time on those games, and they showed some really cool gameplay. But that being said... There really wasn't much else shown other than the four main games. And three of those aren't even coming out this year. So it's kind of a shame. I mean, what's going on, Sony? Do you guys not have anything coming out for the rest of the year besides Spider-Man? Really? And the whole Dreams thing, where in between every game they talked about, they had this weird little five-second musical clip with some kind of like banana or something like that playing music and just being kind of goofy, kind of like a... Uh, illumination movie you know the ones that made like minions and despicable me and whatever that was just completely confusing that was stupid sony stupid that being said though whenever you were actually doing the presentations on each individual game those were playing out really well and i really enjoyed what you guys are doing with that don't change anything with that for the next year and finally this brings us to the big daddy themselves nintendo Nintendo does not do traditional E3 press conferences. They just do a special Nintendo Direct, which tends to be a bit longer and has more content than your normal Nintendo Direct. And that's how it's played on past E3 presentations. But this year, not so much the case. As a matter of fact, it seems like with this one, we got even less overall information than we did in the past couple of Nintendo Directs, which is just sad. Now, I understand that you guys like to do your Nintendo Direct several times a year so that you can keep us up to date on games as they're coming out, but the E3 one needs to be stronger. You need to announce more games. You need to do more stuff like that than you do on the average Nintendo Direct. This is the Nintendo Direct that you should be bringing out the big reveals, the big guns. Another thing, of course, that we need to do is we need to start focusing more on third-party games. I know this is your show, Nintendo, but stuff like the Starlink display that they had at the Ubisoft show, that should have been on your show. You guys should have broke that, not Ubisoft, because that would have been huge on your show. I don't think it would have been as big on their show as it would have been on your show with the audience that the announcement was directed to. And of course, there was no information on the Nintendo online service, even though it's supposed to be launching in three months what happened guys this is the time that you should be talking about details on this stuff we still know nothing about it and we're three months away what gives nintendo and finally i think that for most gamers out there i've got this one covered i think most of you guys are having these feelings because nintendo show did start off pretty well and I was digging it for the first eight minutes or so. And then we got to the big one. Okay? We got to the big one. They spent the entirety of the rest of the show on Smash Ultimate. And not only that, but they made us watch really awkward 
little tutorial videos kind of showing off what these new fighters can do and all this crap. It was just really terrible the way you guys did that. Never, ever again have 25 plus minutes on one game on an E3 press conference. It's only like 35, 40 minutes. Don't do that ever again. And that really is a wrap for the rest of it. If there's any other companies that want to do an E3 press conference next year, like say 2K or WB or Activision or someone like that, just keep in mind some of the advice that your peers have gotten and try to do a good job with presentations or don't even bother presenting it at all. Just release trailers on your YouTube channel. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Don't forget to leave a comment below and let me know what you think. And if you did enjoy this video again, I would really appreciate it if you like and share the video. But till then, Down Phoenix out.